Greetings and welcome to Our Daily Timothy Time. My name is Carl Coates and it's a privilege, pleasure and an absolute joy to be with you once again with an open King James Bible. Looking at a, a textual message today, um, one that I've titled For Us, Not To Us. And it's with regards to 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. Now, if you have your Bible handy with you, let's just quickly give it a read and then you'll get into what I want to cover with you today. First John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But what I want to say about that verse is, once again in my ministry, it's uh, I've heard it being preached just recently completely out of context, out of place, and it uh, it kind of lent itself toward an individual, a member of the church, the body of Christ, they're having to have a short account system uh, um, as if to say that if you don't confess your sins, God's not going to forgive you them, and uh, you don't have eternal security. That's a huge problem. That's a huge, huge problem, because if you've trusted in the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary's cross, firstly recognizing that you're a sinner, you know, you just got to you just got to read those opening chapters of the book of Romans. You get to Romans chapter three, verse Romans chapter three, verse I think it's ten. You just quickly flip there. Romans chapter three, verse ten reads, "As it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one." Uh, you know, and then you go all the way down to um, verse twenty. Therefore, verse nineteen. Now we know that uh, whatsoever things the law saith, it saith to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped. And all the world may become guilty before God. So, number first issue is you've got to recognize that you're a sinner. Number two, that there's a Redeemer. The Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, came to earth, lived a sinless life, went to Calvary's cross, shed his blood. That propitiatory sacrifice, that sacrificial uh, um, uh, um, sacrifice, his, the shedding of his blood. Him giving up the ghost, dying, being buried, and rising up the third day, you know, and uh, uh, recognizing that he is a he's our redeemer, there's a free gift of eternal life through, and here it is, the third point, a one-time response of faith in the finished work of, of Calvary's cross, trusting, resting, and relying exclusively on what the Lord Jesus Christ did on Calvary's cross in his death, burial, and resurrection. No water involved, no walking the aisle, no paying any monies, no doing anything, but simply believing that message you call by Paul's my gospel. So getting back to uh, 1 John verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 9. You know, I heard it out of context the other day, and I thought, wow, man, this is... Uh, I, I, let me just make a video on this, or a, a YouTube uh, um, episode on this, because maybe, just maybe you been had this loaded on your shoulders. That you need to keep a short account system. You don't. The moment you've trusted, you seal until the day of redemption. You have assurance in that. And here's the thing you have peace with God. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Go check it out. Give it a read. So you don't need to worry about that. Now, having said that, you know, you and I, as members of the church, the body of Christ, as we go through our days, do we mess up? Sure, we do. Do we want to? No, we don't. Just like Romans 7 stuff. And here's the thing, Paul tells us, you know, all the way back in, the, in that first doctrinal, foundational doctrinal book of Romans, you know, within 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 the first 18 verses, you know, you, you, in fact, it's from verse 8, I think it is, 8, 9, and 10 of memory serves correct. Paul, you, you look at that and you can see the outline for prayer for us today. Now, when we when you and I pray to our Father, you know, if you do mess up with that, let's just say you kick the cat on the way out and then, Oh, you, you, did, you did a whole bunch of things that you knew were wrong and you did them anyway. You know, you lie in bed that night and you just, and you in prayer. There's nothing wrong with bringing them up. Hey, Lord, you know, I hey, walked out of the house today and, you know, that cat was just in the way and I gave it one solid kick up the backside. And, and you know, you, and you, we speak to our Father. We speak to him about everything and anything in prayer. So you can confess them that way, but you're not confessing so as to have your sins forgiven because your sins are already forgiven. And side note, recently in within the grace circles, I've, I've heard this conversation about uh, 
you know, your sins are forgiven at the cross, not by the cross, you know. Well, your sin debt was paid at the cross, but you still, you and I, still needed to hear the gospel and make a decision for ourselves. So I would say it's not at the cross, it's by the cross. Now, I understand people will argue that and say, oh, and they will come up with all the different reasons. Some folks say it's not a big deal. Listen, it is a big deal. We need to hear the gospel that says, and if you want to read it in a nutshell in the scriptures, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and 4. There it is there. So my, let me get back to my outline and the purpose for my video today. What I want to do today is uh, I've got three charts that are up. I want to start with chart number one, then move to chart two, then chart three. And my my purpose for today is just to, sh to uh, um, using these charts, to explain to the gentle listener. Maybe you know this, maybe you don't. If you don't know this, this will be a help of your joy. That when you are lumped with 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, or any other passages in the Hebrew epistles. Now, what are the Hebrew epistles? Well, we're going to cover that shortly. Basically, before I get there, I'll just tell you anyway. It's the book of Hebrews through to the book of Revelation. Those are the Hebrew epistles. I'll explain a bit more in a moment about that. Okay, so if somebody pulls the first John chapter 1, verse 9, and if you just simply understand where, uh, 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 in, in, on the Bible timeline, where the books are set canonically and the dispensational issue or, or, or importance of where they sit. If you can grasp that, it'll help your thinking when people put verses on you that are not for you. Okay, so the title of today's message, let me just go back. I said to you, the title of today's message, if you're looking for a title, for us, not to us. Okay, let's begin in chart number one. Chart number one is time past. You'll see there that I've written um, in that chart there, time past, and you can find that in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, 11 and 12. Give that a read there. Now, time past, the books that belong to time past are Genesis through Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then early Acts, Acts chapter 1 through to 7. In Acts chapter 7, if you don't know, Israel fall. When Stephen gets stoned, he falls asleep, he dies. Israel fall and Israel diminish through the book of Acts, down to Acts 28. In Acts 9, Saul of Tarsus gets saved, which ushers in the dispensation of the grace of God. Now that will be the next image, image number 2, where it's titled, But Now. Where did I pull that from? Well, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. But now, in Christ. And then the verse carries on. The but now books that are written to us. Okay, our, These are books written to you and to me today in this dispensation of grace. Are the books of Romans to Philemon. Okay, that's to us. Then if you go to chart number 3. Chart number 3, you'll see there... It has uh, ages to come. Now you read about it in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 7. And the books that are attached or assigned canonically to that are Hebrews through Revelation. And take note, the verse we, the text we're dealing with today in particular, specifically, is 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. Now 1 John uh, belongs in this, uh, between Hebrews to Revelation. Who is Hebrews to Revelation written to, I might ask? Well, with a bit of study, and if you don't know already, the book of he the books of Hebrews to Revelation, that's written to the little flock about to go into the time of Jacob's trouble. Said another way, the tribulation period. Said another way, Daniel's 70th week. We read about that in, in Daniel chapter 9. Verse 24 down to the end of the passage. So it's written for, the, for that little flock about to go into the time of Jacob's trouble. And remember, when you, okay, going back to time past, in time past you're dealing with the prophetic program. When Saul of Tarsus got saved in Acts 9, the prophetic program was put on hold. We're now in a time that was unprophesied. Go, go look at Romans chapter 16, verse 25. Compare that with Acts chapter 3, verse 21 and 22 in and around there. Have a look at those verses. Study them and have a look for yourself. You'll see there's a, 
there was a secret kept from the foundation of the world, since the world began. That secret was known as the mystery. Okay, so you had the prophetic program, which was interrupted by the mystery. And when you and I, members of the church, the body of Christ, are raptured out, 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4, 13 to 18, when we raptured out, the prophetic program takes off where it left off. And then the books of Hebrews, come uh, through Revelation, come back into play. Now, early on I said to you that the book of Acts is a transitional book. It's the same with the book of Hebrews. Hebrews explains to those, those people what happened on the cross for them. So it's also a transitional book. That's another study for another time. And I'm just looking at the time clock here. We pretty much just about to run out of time for today. So my point today with you is, when you look at 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if anybody tries it on for size with you, just remember where the book is situated on the Bible timeline. It's situated in, in the ages to come. It's not for you and I, as members of the church, the body of Christ, in this dispensation of grace. It's for our learning. Remember Romans chapter 15, verse 4? Whatsoever things are written for time are written for our learning. So this, the Hebrew epistles, we need to know about what's going on there. Of course we do. But it's not written to you and I. We take our instruction from our apostle, Paul. And we find our books, epistles, like I just said a few moments ago, in Romans to Philemon. Lastly, and in closing, if, uh, if you are interested in a really good read, uh, in the description box down below, there's a whole, there's a whole bunch of links there to some really uh, great commentary by Marion and Mary and Manley. There's a book there um, by Pastor Brian Ross. And the one book I want to speak very quickly about now is one by Pastor Joel Hayes called Empowered by His Grace. Man, I want to tell you, I've just started reading this book. And the, just in the preface alone, the books grip me. And I've just, obviously, like you do when you flip through a book, if I go to the end of this book, it's absolutely amazing. There's a chapter there, chapter 7. 101 spiritual blessings the moment you believe. 101. Wow, man, this is a book. You need to click on that link and buy yourself this book. You need to get a hold of it. And uh, you'll be glad that you did. Anyway, time's up for today. I hope this short time together, this MP3, is of help to you. If you do have any questions that arise, like normal, I say to you, put a comment in the comment box down below. Let this ministry be a help of your joy. And lastly, keep your sword sharp, soldier. Till we meet again next time. Grace and peace to you. Now.